What's up, y'all? So I just got done with dissections uh, in our anatomy lab right now. Um, super cool experience. Of it's but um, we're out of that, and right now I'm with Mateo, the star of today's video. Hi. Hi, Mateo. All right. So today we're with Mateo. That was you know in my class. He's he's my homie. Um, he's you know a sick fool from Long Beach, um, so the LA area. But you know um, I want him to talk about you know himself. Um, and I'm gonna ask him a couple questions about how he studied for the MCAT because he absolutely destroyed it. Um, so yeah, why don't you first uh, talk about yourself? Um, where did you grow up? Um, you know, where do you go to college and things like that? Yeah. So um, my name is Matthew. You can also call me Mateo or Matt. Um, I grew up in Long Beach, California, basically my whole life. So we did have like one year where where I lived in Mexico. We, in terms of college, I went to college, I did two years at Johns Hopkins, and then I transferred and finished my degree um, at UCLA, where I majored in neuroscience and minored in global health. Um, I also took one gap year where I worked at Ultimed, which is a federally qualified health center here in LA, working in their medical education department. Um, so I worked on like different things from um, physician wellness to helping with uh, the COVID-19 vaccinations to um, implementing adverse childhood experiences screenings in the clinic. Um, and now I'm a first year medical student here at the Charles R. Drew UCLA Medical Education Program. So I'm really lucky to, to be here. Um, at what stage of that did you know I'm gonna be, you know, a doctor and, and, pre and I'm pre-med? It wasn't until my sophomore, after the sophomore year, during the summer between my sophomore and junior year, I actually did a program called Summer Health Professions Education Program, which actually I'm now a TA for um, as a med school student, so it's all full circle. But I did that program and I remember like seeing doctors who looked like me, who um, we went to Harbor UCLA, which is a county hospital. Um, and I remember specifically like seeing Latino doctors and doctors that were first gen and I think that was like the first time I really saw myself as like able to become a physician. You know, how'd you go about planning to take the MCAT and to study for it? So um, I knew that I wanted to take at least one gap year. I didn't want to go straight through because I, I felt like that would have been um, very stressful for me. Um, I think it was actually after the program is when I seriously started considering like, oh, maybe I should take the MCAT soon. Um, I also wanted to take the MCAT soon after I finished all my like prerequisite courses so that I could um, really keep that information and be able to um, use that information to help me score well on the MCAT. And so I, I did it. Um, I started planning for taking it during my junior year, but I didn't start studying till the summer after my junior year. And the reason why is because I wanted to make sure to focus on my classes and do well in my classes. But I did start attending. Um, I was really lucky to get connected with Mimentod, which is a really great app for like networking and pre-med events. Um, and they had a uh, workshop on the MCAT. And I attended that workshop and it really helped me plan for um, getting ready to take the MCAT and getting ready to have like good strategies in terms of what to do. Um, and then I also was paired um, with someone from LMSA through an undergraduate organization that I was a part of called Latin Nexus Sashika Nexus for Community Medicine um, at UCLA um, with a, a med student mentor from the Latino Medical Student Association. And so I went and talked to him about how he studied for the MCAT and that was also very helpful in terms of me preparing to uh, get ready to study for the MCAT. Nice, awesome. And we can also add the link for the Mi Mentor website and have uh, any pre-meds out there check it out. It's a great resource. Um, all right, cool. So now, you know, you've, you've, you've spoken to a couple people about how to study for the MCAT, what others did, and now it's time for you to, you know, you, you develop your own plan, right? So how did you eventually start studying for the MCAT? How long did it take you? What resources did you use? And um, I guess when did you know you were ready to take it? Yeah, so I uh, took around 10 weeks, around full time studying. Um, the first three weeks I did have a part-time job. And so I was um, like working. Uh, I was also an RA for that same summer program, Summer Health Professions Education Program during that time. Um, but that was actually pretty low time commitment. Um, 
But what I uh, did in terms of studying, um, I bought some MCAT books. I just chose the cheapest ones, which were the Princeton books. Um, but you can really use any um, MCAT books, Princeton, Kaplan, Exam Crackers. Um, and I just went through the each of the content books. Um, and every day I would try to do at least one chapter from three to four different books. Um, and I chose to do different books so that I was progressing um, through all the content around the same time. You don't want to um, like just do a whole week of biology and then do like the next week a whole week of chemistry because the MCAT is going to be a test where you're kind of tested on everything together. And then the other thing is that a lot of those concepts sometimes like build on each other. And so it's better to like kind of study them together rather than trying to study them apart. That doesn't mean that you have to like study, um, like do what I did and do three chapters of, of, or one chapter of three different books every day. You could do like one chapter of one book and then the next day do like another chapter of another book, but just make sure you're switching it up. Um, but I did content review in that way for around four weeks. Um, I made little summary documents um, based off of what I was reading and the most important aspects that I um, needed to get. And then I would do, Princeton had uh, some uh, non-passage-based questions after the end of the chapter. And so I would do those to test my knowledge. And then if there's anything that I didn't get right, I would review those and kind of make sure that I put that on my study guide. Um, then after doing content review, oh, the other thing that I did was I did a CARS passage every single day, um, no matter what. Um, and I used Jack Weston for that, and Jack Weston has uh, free CARS passages every single day, daily CARS passage. Um, so that was very helpful, um, just in, in starting to do CARS. And then after that, after I did the content review, I just did practice problems and practice tests every single day. So every single day I would do half a test worth of practice problems, so around four to five passages. Um, and in terms of resources I used for that, uh, I used Khan Academy a lot, um, as well as Jack Weston. And then I also um, found some practice problem books at uh, my library. So it's really important to use like all the, the free resources that you can, um, because that was very, very helpful. Um, the other thing that I did in terms of practice problems what I, I was I did them in the same like MCAT order. So I would do uh, chem phys, cars, bio biochem, psych soch in that order but I would I would go and finish the four or five passages I was doing and then I would review those then I would go on to the next passage and then or the next uh, content area. I think that was very helpful. Um, it's really important that you review what you got wrong and understand like what what why you're getting a question wrong as well. Um, but yeah after doing the uh, doing practice problems usually within three three to four days, every three to four days I took a practice test. Um, and so I got a couple practice tests from buying my books. I think you get like three practice tests free from um, your books. And then I also bought an extra six from uh, Blueprint, which I think now is called Next Steps, um, or it might've been the other way around. And then I also had three practice tests from the AMC. So I chose to take the practice tests from the AMC a little bit later, just because those are the most accurate and those tell you whether you, you are prepared to take the test. Um, I would do the, the practice test and then the next day I would review it. Um, and in terms of knowing I was ready to take the test, um, I used my practice test as a way to gauge um, whether I was ready or not. My, my goal was to get like above a 510 if possible. Um, and once I hit 510, I knew like, oh, I could do this. Um, and it's really interesting because like the AMC tests are probably going to be the uh, most accurate to your score. So I got a 517, uh, but I on my practice test, I got a 519, a 512, and a 518, which if you average those is around like a 517. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I did. <clears throat> Thanks for uh, that grand reveal there of your score, 517, which is a 95th percentile. That's a monster score. Um, okay, so just to act, ask more directly, you definitely touched on this, but where did you see the most growth? In terms of your studying, 
you know, um, I know you mentioned you kind of started reviewing and, and doing a little bit of things your senior year, but you, after graduating, got more intense, you know, t 10 weeks of just hardcore study. Where in that did you see the most growth? Yeah, I think it's very interesting because I, I took a practice test before um, before I even started studying and then I took a practice test, I think on my second practice test after I started studying, I like saw that I only improved by like two points and I was very discouraged. Um, but I think what I saw um, was actually the, the most improvement I saw was um, Figuring out why I was getting stuff wrong and figuring out what sections were having were causing me the most trouble. Like for me, it, for example, there's two big issues that I think I had trouble with. Um, one was um, in the bio biochem section, um, I would really like not be able to understand these like research-based passages and so what i did was I, I looked up i just like went on google or reddit and looked up like resources to um do research-based passages well and then i found a youtube video that really really helped me um they basically had this strategy of breaking everything down to the independent variable, dependent variable, and the results. Um, and I, that, I did that on every single research-based passage, and I feel like that really helped me improve my score and improve my understanding in the bio-biochem section. And the other one was actually in the psych section, which was my highest, score, high, highest scoring section. Um, I realized that I, as I was taking like practice tests, I would become so burnt out at psychosoch that even though it was something that was like naturally like easy for me because I was a I took a lot of like psychology courses and neuroscience courses um, that I would be so burnt out that I would rush through the the score or the section and not um, score as well because I wasn't reviewing my answers and taking time to think about um, like is this answer right or wrong or um, reviewing my, my flag answers and so I, I realized that like in the middle of my studying and I kind of adapted and made sure that I, I took the entire time to review all the questions and I think that really helped me improve my score in psych In terms of your study for the MCAT, how many hours a week did you study or, or did you go about it that way? Did you just study certain days, um, you know, take days off? How, what was your schedule like? Yeah, so I don't think I had like a specific like amount of time um, that I would study. Um, I would either like take a practice test and just figure out like when I finish that test, or I would do it based off of um, when I finished half a test worth of practice problems. So it wasn't necessarily like a time thing, it was more of a when am I going to get this um, task that I have for myself completed. Um, there were days where like I was just burnt out like especially in the content review days where I would uh, my goal was like to do three chapters but I ended up only doing two chapters um, and so it's okay to sometimes like take a step back and like not do as much but try to be consistent and make it a habit um, I think because uh, it was a habit um, it was very um, easy for me to do. Um, the other thing I would say in terms of just like studying in general is if you have a friend who's studying for the MCAT, at least for me, it was helpful to just have someone who is also studying, like not necessarily studying the exact same thing, but um, just there. Um, it was nice to have someone there while I'm studying because it helped keep me accountable um, in terms of my studying. And um, yeah. Oh, and then also just locations. You want to try to study in like quiet places. So go to your local libraries. University libraries are great for studying because they're usually pretty quiet. Um, and so I would go to the UCLA library, sometimes the USC library, or just like the public library. Um, sometimes on the weekends I would have to do um, like a coffee shop. Um, but most, oh, and then in terms of like when I studied, I usually studied Monday through Friday and then some weekends I would take off, some weekends I would do like one day 
Um, but I tried to usually take at least like one day a week off um, from studying and just do something fun. Our next question is, you know, for anyone about to go on this on this tough journey, uh, you know, what advice do you, as someone that scored really, really well on this, have for, you know, that, that pre-med, that person that's going to start opening the book for the MCAT or maybe has already attempted to study, you know, but, you know, they gave themselves a break and whatnot. What's some advice you would give them? Yeah, I think um, it's important to like stay well while also studying for the MCAT. It can be a really stressful time. And so um, I would recommend make sure to take care of your like physical well-being. That means like doing some sort of exercise um, every single day, whether that's like walking, doing yoga, working out. Um, also taking care of your um, mental well-being, like not trying to study if you're feeling burnt out, um, taking time to rest. Um, I would give, I usually did not study at least as much as I, um, as much as I did during the week, during the weekends, and I would give myself the, the ability to do something fun. Um, and then also emotionally, like sometimes you, you need a vent and it's okay to um, like vent to friends or mentors. I would always talk to a mentor and tell them how I felt after I took like a, a practice test. And I think that was really helpful. Um, I remember like feeling discouraged after my like third practice test where I like dropped four points. Um, but then I, I like talked to my mentor about it and he really encouraged me to keep going. Um, and that I was capable of, of doing well. Um, other things also, it, it's super duper important, especially if you are like a first gen student to talk to like the people that you're living with or your family and like discuss like, hey, this is going to be a really difficult time and I'm going to need to spend a lot of time studying and, and setting those boundaries, um, which can be hard, um, especially I, I know for me, like just trying to um, like tell my parents and explain the process can sometimes be difficult. And so it's very important that you have those candid conversations with your family and let them know um, that you have to take time to study um, and, and compromise sometimes. Um, and yeah, I think those would be the, the big advice. Also, like find a mentor that can help you, guide you through this process. I think that was really, really helpful for me and um, was a big reason why I was so successful um, in my MCAT study. All right. Uh, Mateo posts a lot of stuff, a lot of re like helpful advice, tips and stuff. Um, where can people follow you on social media? Uh, you can follow me at Matt underscore the MD to B on Instagram. Um, feel free to follow there. Um, I post a lot about um, pre-med life, but also just like my journey to med school. Um, you may see Alexis or Irvin there from time to time too. All right, y'all heard it. The fool that destroyed the MCAT. So, you know, you can do it. Uh, everything is possible. Uh, don't give up, you know, it gets tough at times, but, you know, remember why you're doing this. And y'all got this. All right, say bye, Mateo. Bye. What's up, everyone? So we just finished up talking to Mateo right now. Uh, we asked him those questions about the MCAT. You know, now we want to make sure we highlight a food that destroyed the MCAT. Uh, you know, so, so I'm on my way out, and I'll let you guys know if I bump into the foods right now. I got some distance right here. This food. Alright, y'all, so I hope you like this video talking to Mateo about how you destroyed the MCAT. I'm with the fools right here. What up? We have more videos coming soon where this homie's gonna talk about his journey as a DACA student. Very inspiring. Stay tuned. You don't wanna miss it.